In this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of animation inside of 3ds Max. So what I want to do is just kind of give you a, a recap of our interface in our animation section inside of 3ds Max. So we have what's called our track bar, and this can be described as your timeline because this is going to have the different frames or all of your frames that you have available on our track bar. So we have 0 to 100 frames available for our animation inside of this current scene. Now we also have our time slider which will allow us to move across our track bar and kind of preview our different keyframes that we have available on our different objects. So we can preview our animation uh, by just by moving our time slider across our timeline. Now we could also use the playback section of our interface here and just hit play animation and that'll move our time slider automatically. Okay, so I just hit pause on that. Let's make sure that we're back at zero. And what we want to do now is actually discuss how we can actually create keyframes and get some animations going in our scene. So the first thing that we want to do is select an object that we want to actually animate. And then what we want to do is actually activate one of our keying modes. Now we have auto key mode, and then we have set key mode. And we're going to discuss set key first, because this is how we can manually set keyframes on our track bar. Now, to think about animation, it's basically movements from one point to another. Okay, so it could be using the move tool, the rotate tool, or the scale tool. And we have some other components uh, that we can animate as well, but if you want to learn more about those, you can really go to our introduction to 3ds Max, or I'm sorry, introduction to animation inside of 3ds Max, and really learn more about that. Now, let's go ahead and manually set some keyframes just to get you started in this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set a key for point A here. So, let's go ahead and make sure that we're on frame zero because this is where we want to make our first keyframe. And let's hit this set keys button, this manual set keys. And once we do that, you'll see that a keyframe has been made on our timeline. And this keyframe is just holding information about this object that pertains to animation. So let's go ahead and move our time slider over to frame 30 on our track bar. And what we're going to do now is move our object to its point B and then set a keyframe. So let's go to our move tool. Let's move our ball over to our box here. And I'm going to hit set key. And you'll see that it creates another keyframe at 30. Now what's going to happen is whenever we move this time slider back in between 0 and 30, you'll see that our ball is animating. Okay, so our keyframes are holding some information about our movements on this ball. So as we move this time slider, we see that animation happening or that movement happening from point A to point B. Now, I want to discuss very briefly the timing, the reason that we set our keyframes at 0 and at 30. Now, inside of 3ds Max by default, we have 30 frames per second. So our ball is taking one second to move from point A to point B. Okay, so if we play this, let's go back to zero and hit play. It takes exactly one second to get from point A to point B. Now let's say I want my ball to take half a second to get from point A to point B. I would just take my keyframe at 30 and move it to 15. So now our ball is going to move faster. So you can see how setting your keyframes on specific times on our timeline can either slow down the, the ball or it can speed up the movement of our ball here. Okay. So if we want to make this go two seconds from point A to point B, we just move this timeline or this keyframe just by clicking on it. You'll notice it turns white and then we can just click and hold on it and move it over to 60. So now this ball is going to take two seconds to get from point A to point B. So let's go ahead and 
move this back to 30. Let's grab that keyframe, move it back to 30. And let's go ahead and discuss our next keying mode. And this is called Auto Key. Now, Auto Key works a little bit differently because we don't have to use the Set Keys button. It will automatically create those keys. So let's go ahead and demonstrate Auto Key with our box here. Now, I do want you to see really quickly, whenever we switch to our box, you'll notice that those keyframes have disappeared on our track bar. And the reason that is, is because keyframes are held on the specific object themselves. So when we select our sphere, those keyframes show back up on our track bar. So let's go to our box, and now they're gone. Now we can actually create some new keyframes for our box, and those will display on our track bar. So let's go ahead and let's move our time slider to 30 because this is where our ball is actually making contact with our box. And what I want to do is just animate this box moving back just a little bit to kind of feel the repercussions of our ball falling into it. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do is start my movement here. So at frame 30 Let's go ahead and move this back here. And what you'll notice is that we have a keyframe that is made on 30, and we have a keyframe that's made on 0. So automatically, Auto Key is going to create two keyframes if there are no keyframes existing on this object. Okay? So it's going to create one at 0 automatically, and then a keyframe wherever your time slider is located. Now let's go ahead and slide this, and you'll notice that our box is moving at the same time. So what we can do is actually move our keyframe that is on 0 to 30, and then move this one on 30 to, let's say, 40. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's move this one out of the way. So let's move it over to 40. And let's move this one to 30. So this is just one of those common mistakes that happens uh, for someone who is new to animation, especially using Auto Key. This is just something to watch out for. So now as we move our time slider, our ball moves into position, bumps our box, and then our box will move out of the way. Okay, So let's go ahead and I want to discuss how we can actually edit some of our movements that we have created on our keyframes. So you'll see that our box is moving a specific distance. It's moving from this point back to this point. And let's say I want to kind of shorten up that distance there. We've talked about how we can adjust time, but how can we adjust distance on keyframes that we've already created? Well, what we can do is make sure that our time slider is on the keyframe uh, on our track bar. So on 40, and what we can do is actually move our box to the specified distance, and that distance will be saved. Okay, so no longer is it moving way back here. And if we want to go ahead and make this move back further, what we can do is go ahead and make sure that we're on 40, and just move this further back. So now it's saved that distance. You just have to make sure that your time slider is on the existing keyframe to change that distance. Okay, so there we go. All right, now, one thing that I do want you to know before we end this lesson is one common pitfall that we have with set key. Let's go ahead and go back to that. Let's say we want to make a set key, and we want, let's go, let's go to 35 here. Let's say we wanted to create a little bit of a rotation for our box. Uh, whenever it gets bumped here. So let's go to our Rotate tool. And at frame 35, we want this box to kind of rotate back just a little bit. Okay? And if we go ahead and move our time slider, if we forget to hit this Keys button, that information is going to be lost. Okay? So now you'll see that that rotation is gone. So let's go ahead and hit that Rotate and let's hit the set key and now if we move this you'll see that we've created this key but it's 
only keeping that rotation. It's not flat like it was here at 30. So this is another common mistake that happens. So what we need to do is go ahead and create a keyframe at 30 for our box to be flat again. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our front view and just zoom in on it and rotate this flat and make sure that we hit set key because if we don't we're going to lose that information. So now what we have is our box is standing flat, our ball hits it, knocks it back a little bit, and now it's moving to that last point, but it's still staying rotated back. So what we need to do is make sure we're on 40, rotate this flat, and then let's go ahead and hit that set key. So now what we have is if we play this, as our ball hits our box and it kind of moves back a little bit. And what we've done is we've just kind of discussed some common pitfalls with using set key there. That's really what I wanted to get across to you. Okay, so in this lesson we've discussed just the basics of animation and how to use auto key and set key and a couple of those pitfalls. And in the next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and discuss lighting inside of 3ds Max.